Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Holy God, be in our minds that we might let go of all that diminishes the movement of your Spirit within us. Discerning God, be in our eyes that we might see you in the midst of all the busyness that fills our lives. Loving God, be in our hearts that we can be open to those we love, to those with whom we share ministry, and to the whole human family. Gracious God, be in that grace-filled silence that lies deep within us. That we might live in Christ as Christ lives in us. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that those that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The reading from Paul's letter to the Coloss Colossians. As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you, have circumcised, you were circumcised with the spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh and the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through the faith and the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and uncircumcision and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him. When you forgave all, your, all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with all its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and the authorities and made a public example of them triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions, puffed up with cause by human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. The word of the Lord. Please join with me in saying Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. You have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord. The great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He preserves, perceives the hearty with, from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. The kingdom of God and its righteousness
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us into the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend. And you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives. And everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Good morning. When Des was born, uh, she got to be, I don't know, I don't remember how, actually the Lees may remember how the numbers correlated, but better than I do even. Jack and um, Peter Orgain were getting ready to move, and I got this call that said, hey, can we bring you something from the boys? And I was like, yeah, that's fine. And so they showed up at our house with three giant tubs of Legos. And when I mean giant tubs of Legos, I mean like huge, enormous, like big, like those big storage bins full of Legos. And it was so cool. And you could see that inside of them were like everything a kid could want, right? Like they got like Star Wars sets and they got like a pirate theme set, and there's some Harry Potter, so there's a ton of our Star Wars stuff. Very excited about this. There's just a ton of stuff in there. Except here's the problem. You know what wasn't in any of the boxes? Any of the instructions. Here, here are some random parts. Build that stuff. Thank God Des was only three at the point at that time. Now at nine, it's a little more daunting. We, like, we sort of sometimes we get the bricks and we're like, I don't know how to get from this to the Death Star. There are 82 million D bricks here. How do we do this? It is overwhelming to say the least. I know that it can be built. I know that, all, well, I mean, it's Thor Gaines, so let's not push it too far that all the pieces in there are in there. I know Betsy well enough to go, she would go, let's just take one of these out and just throw it away. Like that puzzle that never gets done, right? And laughing all the way to the bank, I'm sure. But I assume that all the pieces are in there and I know that it can be built. I just have no, you know, idea. And I could go on the interwebs and find it out. I could Google, uh, Google, how do I build Lego Death Star? And it would give me the instructions. Maybe. Have you been on the internet lately? It ain't exactly accurate. Billy Bob Bohickey may have put up his own instructions on what the Death Star is going to look like. And suddenly the Death Star looks like, you know, 
a shell station or God knows what else. And so we are left with this giant box to figure it out on our own. And it is a daunting and frightening task. But every once in a while we pick up a box. Now it's Martin and I mostly. Des is past that. And we pick up the box of Legos and we sit there and we sort of just click things together. And guess what has never happened? The Death Star is yet to happen. It's, it's a big piece. I was like, it's so many pieces. It, it would take forever. It's never been built yet, but you know what's happened? We've built some other stuff along the way. We built some houses, we built some cars with lopsided wheels because we can't exactly find the one that fits. We've got three that are the same size and one that's a little dodgy. But it's important to remember what? It works. It's a start. And some of the fun and some of the excitement was in the doing. And more importantly than even that, it's just the willingness to engage it and to try. This morning, we get the Lord's Prayer from Luke. And you all will have noticed, I'm sure, that it is slightly different than the Lord's Prayer that you're used to. That's because Luke doesn't care. It's Luke cares. The one that you're, the, you know, the one that we say all the time, that you're used to, that you hear all the time, that you have been saying, that some of you learned before you were allowed to take communion for the first time, that you learn from the very minute that you come out of the womb, basically, by somebody sitting next to you in church and just saying it over and over and over again. Truth be told, I have never met anybody who learned the Lord's Prayer, who like sat down and learned it. It just happens. Like, it just goes inside of you, and it becomes part of you. It is the commonest prayer of the church. doesn't matter where you go. Everybody knows this in some variable forms. But the one you know is the one that comes from Matthew, and it's full and robust. And Luke, much more like our friend Mark, just cuts it down to the bare bones. Father, hallowed be your name. We just skip to the point. You know who you are, and I know who you are, too. Boom. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. I don't care where, just there, here, everywhere. Just your kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread. We're going to screw this stuff up, so forgive us as we forgive other people's. Amen. Makes you wish we did that one more often, doesn't it? Right? Like it's very simplified. It's super simple and it's super clear. Just the bare basics. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Building the kingdom of God it is something I have stood up here and you have heard me say eight million bazillion times over the course of 14 years. And I'm sure that every time I said it, you thought to yourself, what does that mean? It's like a giant box of Legos, isn't it? We talk about the, the, building the kingdom of God is one of those things that priests and preachers and all of us love to talk about. Build the kingdom of God, build the kingdom of God, children, build the kingdom of God, build the kingdom of God. We, we love it, but it's just a random box of Legos. It's just a thing we say. Does anybody have the instruction manual? How do we build this thing? Somebody tell me. You are awfully quiet. I will assume none of you know either. It is a daunting task. We kind of think we got it. The same way I think I've seen the Star Wars. I've seen Star Wars enough that I know what the Death Star looks like. Big round bowl, little indention. I know what it looks like. I've read the Bible. I know what building the kingdom of God looks like, right? Good. Go build it. But where do we start? What's the first piece? How do we get it? When we get, does, do we have to build it from the inside out, outside in? How does that work? I, I okay, forget it. I'm just going to honk at the guy at the light anyways. Maybe make a gesture.
That's too much work. It's too hard. So you just throw the whole table over and walk away from it. But the prayer that we were taught in either form asks us to do this hard work. To look at all the bits and pieces that we know and begin somehow to put them together. Because I got to tell you, the one thing that I am positive about when I look at the giant box of Legos is there is a ton of potential, but don't none of it look like a Death Star. And when I look at the world, I look around and I look outside and I look at the news and I look at everything, I look at it and go, well, there's a ton, ton of potential, but I don't know what it is, but it ain't the kingdom of God. And it is daunting and scary, but it is our duty and call and job to sit down and get to work and start putting some pieces together. And maybe, just maybe, we won't get to the kingdom of God, but maybe, just maybe, we get a car that rolls a little wonky. Have you looked at our church lately? Maybe, just maybe, if we build it long enough, we keep tinkering with pieces, we'll find a window, a door, something here, and we'll build a sailboat with a, you know, screen door at the bottom. It won't float for long, but it'll float long enough. I know that it's daunting and it's hard, but that's the job. So here's the question for you this morning, and I, this is not rhetorical, I'm asking. What does it look like to you? What are the pieces of the kingdom of God that we all know exist in our hearts, in our minds, in our very being, just the way that this prayer got inside of us, the reading, marking, and inwardly digesting of the prayer book and scripture and the community of God where are the moments where we've seen it and gone, well, there it is. That we can create that photo in our brain to start building something. You're all very quiet this morning. We don't want to say anything. What if we're wrong? I'll let you off the hook. The kids have a book by Desmond Tutu that talks about what God's dream is. And I've given it to almost every kid that we've baptized. Jess and I order them when we, they're hard to get. Uh, When we baptize a kid, we give them to the kids and we get them about, I usually order about 15 of them. I'm out right now. But we keep, we keep, you know, we keep baptizing black mar babies. They got a couple, they're okay. But in this book, Dear people of God, it talks about what God's dream is, dream is. And I have to imagine that what God's dream is, is the kingdom of God. That we might love each other. All God's people. Not some of them, not most of them. Not the ones that look like us, not the ones that worship in our place, not the ones that live in our place, not the ones that sing the songs that we like, not the ones that were born in the generation that we happen to be born in, not the ones that happen to drive the same cars as us, not the ones that wear the same clothes as us, not the ones that go to the same school, not the ones, not the ones, not the ones, but a word that you all know very well, all, y'all. Y'all means all. It doesn't mean some. It doesn't mean most. It means literally all. Loving all. And most importantly, the ones that you hate the most. You got you to gotta love them the most. That's going to be the most work. That's that one stupid piece that you haven't found that is in the bottom of the box and you have turned everything over 3,200 times. The last little light bulb that goes on the top of the antenna that a worker probably forgets to replace anyways. 
And you may curse George Lucas' name a thousand times, and you may curse God's name a thousand times, but loving all means all. It means to build the kingdom of God is about peace. The peace which passes all understanding. Not just peace with the people you're already peaceful with. I watch y'all on Sunday morning, and you got I, to all credit, I don't see this usually. But every once in a while, I see this, like, it's the peace comes, uh, so the peace comes, I come over, Oriana, I give you the peace, I love you, this peace. A little bit of peace for Pam, and I give Pam a little bit of peace, all a little peace of God with Pam, and I come over here, and I know Megan's over here, and I walk over, and go, I'm pissed off at her. <laughs> right? I watch you. I know this is crazy. You do not all get along all the time. Or you give peace like this. Peace. I see it happening. Lest you think it just happens here. Those of you who are married or those of you who have children, those of you who you know, know other people. Occasionally, I will say goodnight to some of the kids, or my wife will say, hey, goodnight, I love you. Yeah, I love you too. <laughs> I know what that means. That means I've done something. And usually I retort with what? Not, gosh, I'm so sorry for what I've done. Whatever it is, I'm really, I apologize. My bad. What do I retort with? Well, what did I do to you? How much peace you think is in my household that night? Y'all are smiling because you've done it too. But peace with everyone. Friends, enemies, brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, fellow combatants, everyone. If you want to build the kingdom of God, then you also have to build justice. And not just for just us. Justice for everyone. And not just in the courts, but in our very hearts. It's an amazing thing that happens, right? It's always boggled my mind. We talk about justice. We know that there's a cycle of violence. The people who are abused, who have experienced abuse at a high level, will almost always become abusers. And when they're 8, 9, 10, it's a tr- we, we weep and we mourn for them. Oh my God, we will do anything to stop a child from being abused, won't we? We weep and we mourn for them because they are innocent victims. And then when they turn 18, 19, 20, and they commit an abuse, what do we say? Lock them up. Kill them. Castrate them. Do whatever we got to do. Send them to the bottom layer of hell. Never acknowledging that they didn't get there on accident. But justice is to also know mercy. And to say, I see what and who you are and how you've gotten there. And it can't happen again, but we will figure this out together. That's the Lego that you've stepped on a hundred times buried deep in the carpet. And like a thorn in the side, we avoid it like the plague, but it's got to go in the Death Star to build the kingdom of God. That brick has to be found, has to be figured out. Feeling a little overwhelmed? Somebody blink, something. Feeling a little overwhelmed? You should be. It is a hard and daunting task, but it is a holy and worthy task. And more importantly, even than that, 
It's a task that we desperately need. I claim that you might have life and have it abundantly. But what we have in abundance is fear and anxiety and separation and loneliness and heartbreak. But in the kingdom of God, there is something else. And so it is this morning that we make our prayer that same prayer that Luke made so long ago. That Jesus taught to him. Your kingdom come. And we understand something that Luke implicitly understand, understood. And that Jesus, more implicitly when he gave it to us, understood. Your kingdom come. Not in a snap, not in a blink, not in a wink, not in an instant. But your kingdom come by us. That's why I'm teaching you this prayer. Because I know that I have given you all the pieces for the world and the kingdom that you long for. If you're just brave enough to come to the table and begin to play. Amen. Standing as you're able, let us continue together with our service as we proclaim the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. He bless the Lord my soul and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord my soul who leads me into life. Lord, we seek communion with you we long to be rooted and grounded in you and your love. <clears throat> May your whole church show its unity and love in you. We pray for all who are learning to pray, all who are being taught to me meditate and to contemplate your presence. We pray for religious communities, for spiritual guides and counselors. <clears throat> We pray for all whose lives are absorbed by trivial pursuits, for all who are possessed by their possessions, for all who have become addicted, for those caught up in crime. We remember especially young people who are being led astray. 
We pray for all people who have a low esteem of themselves and those who are devalued by others. We give thanks for all who have encouraged us, given us confidence for all who have helped us to develop our talents and abilities. We pray for teachers and all who are involved in the development of people. We ask you to bless our homes and our loved ones. We remember homes where there is neglect and sympathy. We pray you to guide and strengthen all who are fearful. We pray for any who are awaiting a doctor's diagnosis, all who are awaiting operations or admissions to hospitals. We pray for the loved ones of those who are ill and all who care for them. We bring before you and we know by name who are ill, especially Connor, Alan Lukey, Cindy and Bill Cleveland, Rob Wilson, Terry Poole, Shannon Chavez, Jim Atkins, Angie Blanco Frost, Ed Lawley, Tanya Fain, Ned Ferrara, Butch Adams, Amanda Rose, Leah Brown, Mike Bridges, and those with coronavirus. <laughs> Lord, we trust in you and in your power to save. You are our strength in time of weakness, our hope in time of darkness. We ask you to bless all our loved ones departed. We pray especially this morning for Shad Stewart, father of Shane Stewart. Keep them in eternal life. We ask you to guide and direct all who preach the word and all who administer the sacraments. We pray for all bishops and other ministers and their families, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, David and Rayford, our priest, Sean, our priest. We give thanks for those celebrating their birthdays this week, especially Phila Mendia, May she and they grow in wisdom and grace all their days. We pray for doctors and nurses, all who take care of us, especially Davin Cordell, Carol Grant, Catherine Gooding, Christina and David King, Julius Boatwright, Andrea Hasek, John Bachinski, and Catherine Perley. We pray for those in the armed forces, especially Lieutenant Commander Clinton Woods, First Lieutenant Austin Duenas, Second Lieutenant Sarah Wiley, Ethan Klein, Ensign Hamilton Lee, Second Lieutenant Grant Freeman, and for those deployed around the world. We pray for all diocesan campers and staff for a safe, fun, and spirit-filled summer. Send us, we pray, in this time of need, such moderate and showers that we may receive the fruits of the earth to our comfort and to your honor. We pray for leaders of nations and governments, for all in authority, that they may be wise and gentle in their dealings, that they may be caring and respectful of others. We pray for those in the Ukraine who suffer grievously, for all who make decisions around the world, and for the people and leaders of Russia too. We lift up to you our weary, wounded souls and ask you to send your Holy Spirit to take away the anger and the violence that infects our hearts and make us instruments of your peace and children of the light. 
In the name of Christ, who is our hope, we pray. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Make all of you at home, peace, 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 peace. Boom, 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 boom. Good morning. That's the international sign for you have to sit down. Peace. Peace. Hi. Peace. How was your... It was good. It was really good. A uh, couple... Peace, peace, peace back here, sorry. A couple quick things for the good of the order this morning. Uh, I love it. I'm going to keep going. You just keep on talking back there. Uh, <laughs> a couple quick things for the good of the order. First and foremost, uh, to any visitors or guests with us this morning, welcome and thank you for being. If you're watching online for the first time or for the manyth time, uh, thank you. A uh, quick shout out to uh, Darcy Schrader. Uh, Darcy's not here this morning, uh, but we're going to give a quick shout out to Darcy Schrader, who is our substitute substitute um, uh, streaming service. Uh, streaming service no provider last week. Uh, Trevor was out of town. Connor was out of town. And so I went to my uh, the way into the bullpen, deep into the bullpen. And Darcy has done it before, and she did it graciously. And I was, I was waiting. I was sitting in church uh, where we, Jess and I were on vacation. And I was sitting in church, and I, got, I, I was like, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. There it is. Uh, and it was Darcy. She's like, there are no tiles. There are no nothing. And I was like, don't worry, the tiles are the same. They just won't be able to sing online. So if you were really missing singing last week online, we're sorry. But you got Trevor back this week, so thank you to Darcy, and thank you as always to Trevor. Uh, a couple quick other things. Uh, I know that the beginning of school is coming very quickly, and the parents in the room rejoiced. <sighs> okay? Uh, we are going to do a blessing of the backpacks in a couple weeks. We'll do it the Sunday before school starts, which I believe is the 6th. Seventh, eighth. It's one of those Sunday mornings. <laughs> um, it's the seventh. 
Okay, so it's the seventh. So we're going to do the blessing of the backpacks. But all of you are thinking, but wait, Sean, aren't you supposed to be gone at family camp that weekend? Yes, I will be, except I won't be because it's at the island and I couldn't get supply. I'm going to do church there Sunday night and then run back and do church here Sunday morning. Uh, yeah, that's how much I love you all. Um, and so I will be here that morning. We'll do the blessing of the backpacks that morning and take care of that. Um, I'm going to do this. So the, as always, you can put your offering or pledge in the back. Uh, in the, the alms basin, if you're online, you can text GIVE to 855-678-8540. That's 855-678-8540. Text DONATE. If you're in the building, you can do that as well. But most importantly this morning, not most importantly, but really also importantly this morning, we have, for a variety of reasons, not had a camp Sunday in a number of years uh, because, you know, COVID stuff. Um, and then we weren't doing camp, and then they got camp, so we've had a little kitty, and it just didn't feel like we needed to, to do it. However, I have burned through all the scholarship money for camp scholarships this summer, and I have three more kids who just gave me applications who want to go to camp, and we want them to go to camp, right, people? That was terrible. Let's try that again. We would like them to go to camp, people, right? Right. So this morning, any offering that you make that's in addition to what you normally give or cash that's in the basin, we're going to put towards camp scholarships. If you're online, I don't know how you do that. Just think really hard and Pam will know that's what it's for. And I'm not coming to work Monday because I don't want to get yelled at. No. <laughs> um, let Pam know and she'll take care of it. I'm sure she can handle that. She's of many talents. Uh, really, we, we send a ton of kids to school to camp every year. We've had uh, three or four already this summer. I've gotten a couple of them. And here's my favorite part of them. Guess what? Not all of them are our kids. They're kids that we have, and some of them are Boy Scouts, some of them are Girl Scouts that have a relationship with us. Uh, I sent, uh, I hooked a, gr a group of Girl Scouts up with Camp Capers a couple of years ago to do their annual camping trip. And now, every year, three of them call me and go to camp every year. How cool is that? That's good. That's how you build the kingdom of God. So, uh, no pressure, but if you don't give me all your money to send kids to camp, I'm going to be very angry. Uh, so, no, <laughs> we want to make sure we send as many as possible, so I want to encourage you to do that. Any other announcements for the good of the order? Yes, ma'am. Aww. That is a good and worthy thing. So we have an engaged granddaughter. That's great. Congratulations. Yes, sir. Raffle tickets and barbecue tickets will go on sale next Sunday. Raffle tickets and barbecue tickets go on sale next Sunday. Next Sunday. Way for the Bubba's being way early. Hot dog. Yeah, you guys are excited, aren't you? Yeah. Good. Anything else for the good of the order? Awesome. Uh, one last thing, it's just worthy, it didn't, uh, some of y'all have heard and some of you won't have heard, Mike Bridges is in the hospital, uh, Mike took a pretty rough turn and Mike's health is, is challenging right now, Mike is in ICU at uh, Spawn Shoreline, and I say that to say this, do not go, we all love Mike Bridges, and guess what Mike Bridges does, he loves to talk, and he will talk and talk and talk. And the moment you walk in the room, Mike will start talking. And the moment he starts talking, his oxygen level goes like this. It's at 90 at best most of the time right now. And it, 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 it's getting real low real quick. Um, it, I came in, I prayed, and I looked at Kathy and was like, I'm going to go now. Um, and so I, normally I encourage you to go visit in those things. In this case, don't go visit Mike. Uh, Think happy thoughts, send Kathy a text, and as soon as Mike is sort of able to have visitors, I will let you all know that, um, and we continue to pray that his health increases, uh, and, and uh, thy will be done, whatever that looks like. Um, so it, it is a tense time. Kathy's doing well, um, but it, as well as one can be in this time. So, okay? I wish, that should have been the first announcement. Sorry about that, because it's a little bit of a downer. Everybody else good? Good. All that being said... This is the table of the Lord, and it is made ready for those who love and for those who want to love more. So come, you who have much faith and you have little, you have been here often and you have not been here long at all. You have tried to follow and you have fallen short. Come because it is the risen Lord who invites you. It is the risen Lord who wants to meet you there.
Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and water, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life, and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. And he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves, a living sacrifice. Pour out your Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your Spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father.
Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for you, the gifted people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Together, let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, and you've united us with Christ and with one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. I forgot one other thing. You'll see it in the back of the bulletin, and it's really important. See this little QR fancy code here thing? If you scan it with your phone, it'll come up. I know that Mike Bassan is watching this morning, and that's why I'm making this announcement before I forget. This is for the survey for the profile for our next bishop. The standing committee is in the process of putting together. The more people that participate in this, the better the spirit can move to call the right person for us. So please, if you get a chance, uh, scan it. You can go to the, there's a website for it too. We can give that to you. We've been sending it out. Please take the survey. Got it? All that being said, the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always as you try to go forth into the world building one small little brick at a time, the kingdom of God. Amen. Alleluia, song of gladness, voice of joy that cannot die. Alleluia is the anthem ever dear to choirs on high. In the house of God abiding, thus they sing eternally. Alleluia, lead our praises to Jerusalem and free. Alleluia, joyful mother, bring us to your jubilee. But by Babylon's all waters, journeying exiles now are we. Alleluia cannot always be our song while here we go. Alleluia, our transgressions make us for a while forego. For the solemn time is coming in our tears for sin shall flow. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Go do good things. Absolutely.